Hello, my name is Sophia Fohas. I'm a doctoral student at San Jose State University in the Department of Educational Leadership. I come to this work uh, as a musician, a violinist and a violist. I was a music educator for 20 years. I taught orchestra and mariachi, uh, concert band and international baccalaureate music. And for the last eight years, I've been an arts administrator uh, and have served as such in three different counties in Northern California. I'm here to talk to you today about creativity and the arts. The arts are a way in K-12 education that is often overlooked as a way of demonstrating students' uh, understanding of content. Um, one of the ways arts learning uh, is able to do this across different content area is the way the arts are taught. The arts are skill-based, they're sequential, and the ability to either replicate a skill or a technique is fairly obvious. And so it's been my, an interest of mine to be able to transfer that kind of learning, that proven perseverance through adversity that the arts teaches students and teaches us, um, and apply it to other parts of education, particularly in service to supporting students who have been historically marginalized and uh, underserved. And in the United States, typically these are students of color, students living in poverty, um, students who are English learners. One of the ways that um, the arts can bridge gaps in our educational system is by, in combination with culture, drawing families and community in to K-12 school settings. One of the things I did um, and have done is start mariachi programs in California. Um, mariachi is specifically a Mexican art form, um, music form, cultural form, that is often paired with dance called Ballet Folklorico. And one of the things that I've been able to do is to bring school communities, arts organizations together under the umbrella of mariachi. I've done it um, in Santa Clara County, and then I started a program in San Francisco County. And it was tremendously successful. And I think the arts are a way to bring families and people together, regardless of uh, culture, regardless of socioeconomic status, um, because arts and creativity bring joy. And so one of the things that um, I've been looking at in particular is how arts and creativity can serve to support our most disenfranchised uh, youth, youth in foster care and youth experiencing homelessness. The arts have been proven to instill a sense of belonging for students, give them a membership to a network of colleagues. Um, often when a student is in uh, a band or a theater class or a visual arts class or a dance class, that student has a sense of belonging. The arts can also, as I said before, increase school climate. It has been proven to bring families into the school setting um, in a positive way and lowering the affect for uh, families to be able to engage with the adults in the K-12 system. It has also been proven to um, decrease uh, school suspensions, increase graduation rates, uh, and in the United States, we're very concerned about test scores, um, so it 
allows for academic success because students who engage in the arts go to school more than their non-arts cohorts. So it's tremendously important to maintain the arts in our K-12 system. Um, and, and in particular, that it be free. And one of the beauties of the public education system in the United States is that it does not cost money to be able to participate in the arts. So I just close by way of saying there is a lot of research about the benefits, the social emotional benefits, um, the, the affective benefits of the arts, creative expression, uh, joy, um, happiness, and I hope that this little informal conversation allows, sparks your interest and allows for you to explore the ways arts and creativity can benefit not only K-12 students in K-12 uh, education, but society at large. <music>